Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. Also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. In a moment, I'll introduce you to my wonderful guest, Erin Hill Newman, a spiritual business coach and author who uses heart-centered methods to help women entrepreneurs to create, transform or boost their businesses. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching the show live or at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. If you've never met me before, then my name is Ray and I help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform the present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm also the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and I use angelic Reiki, future life regression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny. I've also created a transformational journey to help you take control of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests like today's guest, Erin Hill Newman who's not only a spiritual business coach and author, but a wonderful shaman. Erin works with smart spiritual women just like yourselves to move through blocks and fears, discover their courage and claim all their magic in order to create the most amazing life, business or creative endeavor. With testimonials including, Erin helped me clarify my mission and make it more, feel more real and more achievable. And Erin is a skillful and perceptive coach. Sometimes you need a little push to get unstuck and Erin is authentic, wise, fun and engaging. She is the seeker of higher consciousness and a wonderful guide and coach because of it. So without further ado, hello Erin and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm great. After that introduction, I just feel so empowered myself. It's like, <laughs> the best intro. That's awesome. Well, you, you are an awesome person. Um, so and before, likewise, likewise. Thank you. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, then whether you're watching live or recording, please hit the love like button, as I love watching hearts and thumbs flashing across the screen. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it the thumbs up and subscribe to it so that you can get updates on all recordings. You can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Erin and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Erin, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how claiming their own magic can help women take control of their destiny? Sure. So, um, yeah, I think Ray gave me a pretty great introduction. Um, I don't even know that I really need to add anything to that. Um, I guess what I would offer is just sort of a little piece of my own story. And that is, um, you know, I used to work in corporate America for a long time and, um, uh, when I was there, I always knew there was something bigger. I knew there was something more I was supposed to be doing. Um, I had visions of leading these circles of women. I had no idea what we would be doing in those circles, <laughs> but <laughs> that was sort of my vision. And and I underwent this long process that maybe some of you are going through right now too, that sort of spiritual journey, that awakening process where you start realizing there is something more, there is something out there for you. Um, and uh, became a life coach. And then um, during my life coaching training, realized that um, shamanism was going to be a huge part of the work that I did, which was really scary. I don't know how that was for you, Ray, but for me, it was sort of like a slap in the face of like, oh, you're going to be doing that? That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, came from a very left brain world and that was was not part of it. So, um, yeah, it was definitely a big, um, big hard step to cross into to really claim that magic. And so that's why it's really important to me to help other women out there who are exploring that path, trying to incorporate those pieces of their own magic into their lives and into their businesses um, in a way that feels really authentic and real. And, um, you know, and also at the same time connects with people that aren't necessarily in the same woo-woo world that we are. Yeah. You know, I, that's very important to me is that that we're able to speak to the practical side of things and say, mm -hmm. look, these are some things that you can do in, you know, the ordinary world in order to, um, I mean, they're, they're magical practices, but 
um, you know, if you translate them into a language that other people can understand, then then they get to benefit from them without without having to assign it some sort of um, mystical properties, even though that's what it really is. But yeah, yeah, because I think we we can do we, you know we we can do that, and um, we can sort of like take the spiritual things and actually make them a little bit more practical for you know for people you know say like with meditation you know um you know you meditate and you go in you know and you go into a different world a different energy but you can actually do that people well if you meditate you'll feel relaxed you'll right. get going. Be less stressed and yeah, yeah exactly right yeah there's a way to message it too um yeah and and i guess um you know I was thinking about this as, as I was driving earlier, what, what is important about those of us that are walking this spiritual path, which I'm guessing is most of, most of the people that are watching yeah. is that um, I think, I think that when you start to deny it, when you start to suppress it, when you start to say, okay, that's not happening. This isn't happening for me. That's crazy. That's, out there that's um, not rational, it's not going to be part of my path, it, things start to happen in your life that um, really start calling out for your attention. You know, maybe you get sick or maybe um, you get into car accidents, you know, maybe um, uh, not that all of those have necessarily, no, no. Stress, right? But, uh, you know, those, those can be signs that you're really pushing down your gift, you know, you're really um, trying to ignore what's true and real for you. Um, and, and of course, that has to do with all the messaging and programming that we've grown up with around what's acceptable. Um, so it's just always been really important for me when I started helping people um, to have them kind of step into the fullest expression of who they are and of what they really would love to be doing in their lives, you know, and um, I think that is magical. You know, I think stepping into your purpose and stepping onto your your path is. Oh, oh, the planes, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because I think um, a, a lot of people, um, especially women, kind of like know they should be doing something, but they don't know what it is they should be doing. Um, so, so how? What's one of the best way? You know, sort of like ideas that that they can sort of like, well, actually, I can find out what I'm supposed to be doing this way or that way. Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, I guess what I wanna, what I wanna sort of um, enunciate or, or focus on here is that we, we use that idea that there's only one thing, you know, there's only one soul purpose, there's only one life purpose. We use that as sort of um, a crutch to not be doing the thing that we know our heart is calling us to do right now. You know, there's a, a lot of times people say, well, I just need clarity. I just need focus. I just need whatever. And <clears throat> to me, the question is always, what are you being called to do right now? That's the thing you're supposed to be doing. Not where is this going to go five years from now? Not, you know, what am I going to call myself? Not um, how am I going to make money from that? But whatever it is that you're being called to do right now, that's the thing you're supposed to be doing, um, you know, and you can do that by meditating, you know, sitting in meditation, just asking, what is it? What is it? Um, what is that thing that I'm supposed to be doing right now? And and maybe it's just sitting, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, that might be the answer for a lot of people. Um, you know, people tell me a lot of times, Aaron, I think I'm just supposed to sit on the couch and do nothing. <laughs> like <laughs> That's what I want to do. And I'm like. Okay, you know, I think that means you need a little bit of a break, a little bit of rest right now. But then after that, there's something you're being called to do. It's just that we have so many layers of that. That's crazy. And you can't do that. And you're never going to earn money from that. And, you know, all those layers are on top of they're disguising the thing, whatever that thing is. So, I, yeah, I would offer you know, just keep asking, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? You can journal on that. You can meditate on that. Um, one exercise that can really help you is called the ideal life exercise, mm -hmm. where you, you put yourself out in the future, maybe a year out, maybe five years out. I really love doing it 
um, like a hundred years out or 500 years out, um, you know, and cause then you get to really open it up. You get mm. to really blow the roof off of, of what would I be doing if I was immortal, <laughs> you know, or maybe not immortal, but yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Long, long yeah. Long. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's what we do, um, you know, when, when we do future life progression, you know, you can take someone five, 10 years or into a future life. And quite often when you've taken people into future lives, they kind of like do come back and they're going, actually, I'm supposed to be teaching. Right, right. And that, and again, um, I, I think sometimes people also, and I don't know if you agree with this, sometimes people think that your sole purpose, what you're meant to be doing is, sort of like spiritual or healing or something like that when actually being a teacher or just being someone to people to talk to that could be what you're supposed to be doing exactly i mean you might be supposed to be the best damn garbage man out there you know and for right now you know because i think also people really equate the whole soul purpose thing with like what's my role in life right now you know, like you said, I want to be a teacher, you know, maybe your soul's purpose is just to learn and experience and grow and help others to heal. And through the role of a teacher, you know, for right now, but mm. I, I don't think, I, I think us humans, we've kind of narrowly boxed in, like, what yeah. is our soul's purpose? And, it, you know, and if I can't figure out what it is, then I can't do anything. I might as well just sit on the couch, you know? Um and I, and I just think, like I said, I think it, that's a crutch. I think it's a way for us to say, I'm going to shut that down. I'm going to not pay attention to it. I'm going to not go for the things I want to do because, because I don't know my sole purpose yet, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, no, that, that, yeah, that makes that, you know, that makes absolute sense. And it's also, you know, that thing, um, I think sometimes people also go, you know, because there's a lot of people out there that will go, oh, well, I had this hard life. My childhood was hard. Um, you know, uh, I had this accident. That sort of like brought me to my thing. And, you know, some people are going, I've had a really nice life and I've not ever had anything like that. So does that mean I'm not spiritual or, or you know, or, or, or anything? And I think that sometimes confuses people as well. Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, I think you're going into it a really interesting topic too, right? Like how dark does your path have to be? How hard does it have to be in order for you to claim that you've come out on the other side, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a conversation I have with my therapist all the time. Cause I'm like, why did mine have to be so hard? And she's, she's always telling me you're everyone's was hard. You just didn't see that, you know, everyone had their stuff. Um, and I think, yeah, I don't know the answer to that, Ray, really, because um, I think we all have our shit, you know, we all have our stuff we have to work through. And even if that was in the midst of a great life, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's also, you know, you could have had in, you know, in previous lives, you know, if, if, you, if you're into past life stuff, you know, in previous lives, you could have had the most hardest lives in your previous life. So in this life. You're not going to have all that because you're here to be your whatever you're meant to be doing. So you've done all that. You don't need to worry about it now because you're free to do it. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's a great point. True. Yeah. You've done all you've already done your healing. You're ready to go. Yep. Exactly. So what other ways can um, women do to sort of like create their own their own magic in their lives to, you know, to. Not, not so much to move forward but, or fulfill them, but to actually be who they're meant to be, to, to be in control of their lives and not allowing life to be in control of them. I think it really starts with the words, I decide. You know, with, it, it, I mean, I'm saying the words, but it's a knowing, right? That mm. you have to really come into that knowing of, I choose, I decide, I create this whatever your present reality is, you know, because so many of us have looked at this and said, um, life did this to me. You know, like you said, I was handed a bad hand and and all these things transpired against me. And, and 
at some point in your adult life, you're going to have to say, now I get to decide. Now I choose. I can choose whether to hate my parents. I can choose whether to blame my spouse. I can choose whether to blame my children and the traffic and the boss and the whatever. Or I can say, I choose. And it's in that moment, you know, and obviously there's a lot of healing there. Mm. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of making this very yeah, pat. Yeah. But it's in that moment that you get to um, really decide your own destiny and decide your own fate and decide that the thoughts in your head are not going to create your reality. Well, they're, they've created your reality and the thoughts that you're currently having are no longer going to be the thoughts that are going to create your future reality. Um, yeah, and it, it, it's hard work, right? I mean, it's not like... It's not like a switch goes off and everything is um, changed or illuminated or whatever. And and I found, and I don't know, you, you've probably found this too, Ray, that um, your personal stuff shows up in your business so, so fast. It's like immediate, you know, I'll be wrestling with something and then I'll have two clients come in with the same thing. Or I'll be yeah. wrestling with something and I'll have, you know, two clients fall apart over money or something, you know, and, and I'm always like, Oh, this is mine. This is showing up for me. Um, so it's not like it's immediate sunshine and roses after that point, but it, it does start with claiming your own destiny, claiming your magic starts with knowing that you are responsible. You are in charge. You get to decide whatever that is. You get to decide how you're going to feel about the situation which is so important, you know, because whatever the external circumstances are, you can choose, you can choose how you feel about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that, yeah, that, that we, that we can choose um, what we do, but sometimes I think we allow outside influences to affect the way that we think. So we don't sometimes get that clear thing of, you know, oh, this is what I should, this is, you know, this is what I should be doing. This is what I allow myself to do because you've got loads of other stuff coming in, which is again, where it's kind of like, as you were saying earlier, you know, just take yourself out slightly, just meditate, you know, and just ask, you know, take yourself away from that situation or all that stuff that's being bombarded at you. Yeah. I mean, and if you think about it, we've spent years being trained a certain way, right. You know, being mm. trained, from society and from our parents and from everybody, um, it takes years to undo it, you know? And I think that's sort of the lesson is just kind of always coming back to that place of compassion for wherever you are and whatever you're going through. And it's, you know, I've, I I just have so many clients who are like, I should have healed this already, you know? It should be gone by now. I should have done this work already. Why is this coming up again? And um, I think it it's just all part of the path. You know, that we just see those same speed bumps coming up again and again, but hopefully from a from a place where we can handle them better. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's, I mean, I don't know if you see with, with your clients, um, but kind of like when the same thing comes up. <laughs> and my ear buzzes so i couldn't even hear them come in i'm like oh my god there's a little demon uh, i'm missing my cat jumping in and coming into things but not for just, who who's that this is aiden can you say hi aiden hi all right Hello, aiden. we're on an interview so you're gonna have to like go hang out somewhere else for just a little bit Ooh. okay oh, <laughs> he's still here <laughs> Oh, that's okay. <laughs> oh, the interlopers. Oh, they, they come everywhere. Yeah. Pretend he's not there. <laughs> like the guy from the BBC, that one who was like, so, Yes. That was the best one. Yeah. That was, that, the, best that, one. That was the best one. Anyway, where were we? I don't even know. Um, <laughs> gosh, I don't even know. Um, no, I think we kind of like got. Got a little bit, a um, little bit distracted there. Didn't we? <laughs> we did. Um, I think you were saying something about. I don't know if you see this with your clients, but yes, yeah. Um, the the when they have um, they have the same image, so they they come in, work on on an issue uh, uh, or whatever they've got, and then they come back and go, "Why well, haven't you know they you know and they come back and say, but this has come back again.' You know, this might be. Uh, months later but I they I find that they then deal with it slightly differently right 
So right. it's kind of like each time it comes up, they tend to deal with it differently. So it's kind of like an unraveling. Right, right. Yeah, and I see that a lot. So I do EFT or tapping. And, mm. um, you know, if we're not... You can you can if it's if it's an intensity of 10 or something when when it comes in when the the issue comes in um you know maybe we're able to get it down to a three or so during that session um and that's after a lot of of work yeah. of, of different pieces of it but that doesn't mean it's gone you know and it, and it can get triggered again so i i see that um I think we all are hoping for that magic pill, like the mm. magic thing that will, you know, the magic modality, the magic practitioner, the magic anything that's going to like sort of wipe it all away. But, you know, at the end of the day, you still have to go back and like, I have to cook dinner for the kids. I have to, you know, drive through traffic. I have to do all those really normal yeah. human things. And they are going to pull that all back up. And, and you're going to have to, in that moment, really be aware of what's happening. And I think the work that you and I do really helps to bring that awareness, really helps to clear some of the old stuff so that people can move through their normal lives with more awareness, more compassion, more love for themselves and for other people. And, um, you know, I do that from from a more business standpoint, but it's it's all the same work. You know, it's it's all we're all doing that same work process with people so yeah so if um so someone um said you know knows 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 what they're doing knows what their soul uh, purpose is and that and they're trying to think well I kind of like now I want to take the next step I want to try and make it into a business you know what sort of things you know can can they sort of like do to help move forward so so it's, so it's like claiming their magic to move move forward in a business type way yeah that's a big question um you know i think even here like we always want somebody asked me the other day at this this thing i was doing can you just tell me like the plan <laughs> you know like, what's the plan <laughs> um i wish i had a specific plan but there there isn't one plan for anybody because we're all so different and unique. And I, what I'm always telling people is to ask the question again, what am I supposed to be doing right now? And usually the answer in starting a business is something that's outward facing. So meaning it's, um, you know, putting out a post on Facebook that says I'm offering this now, or it's um, doing your first Facebook live and telling people about what you do, or it's starting a blog or starting a um, uh, an interview. Um, hi, Carla. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, it's it's something that's outward facing usually, but I will say that most of us want to do the interfacing stuff in a business. We want to research. We want to look at other people's websites. We want to look at what other people are charging. Um, and I would just offer that try not to do that. You know, try to shut off what everyone else is doing as much as possible because you're going to have to create your own programs. You're going to have to create your own um, path in all of this. And, and what I always am saying is, it doesn't matter what step you take, really, as long as it's not research. Um, just get out there. Like, it doesn't matter what the step is. It doesn't matter if you've seen this webinar and it says that you have to write your sales funnel or you've seen this webinar and it says you can only do X and Y and Z. Like, it doesn't matter. Just take any step because going from that state of, um, I know my purpose, I want to stay start make charging people like it's a it's huge you know going from zero to anything <laughs> amount of dollars um is this huge mindset leap you know because we can we could do this work for free all day long but your your shit is not going to get triggered until you start charging money so take any step forward that is going to tell people here's what i do and i charge money for it and then 
And then you'll sort to sort sort of start to see, okay, here's where I go next, here's where I go next, here's where I go next. Um, but there isn't one plan, you know, and, and like I said, I think everyone hopes that the plan is, oh, I can spend hours on my website or, oh, I can send, spend hours setting up my newsletter. And um, I would just so, so encourage you to not do that. Like just start putting yourself out there in whatever way comes to you, because that's how clients are going to find you. That's how people are going to find you. And um, they can't find you if you're just sitting behind your website. So, yeah, I don't know. Was that helpful? that yeah well to me that was helpful um carla's saying that she shared it which is absolutely lovely so uh, carla um i don't know if you can say whether that was that was helpful or not um you know and i've actually um done that thing with Darren where we've kind of like gone into that space and it's like okay what what <laughs> yeah yeah and, and it does and the and the answers literally do come to you straight away if you, if you don't think about it right I think I, just, I, think I just i just I just went blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and that when I did it, but it helped me with what I should be doing um, at that particular point. So, you know, that is a, is a question to, you know, to sit down and ask yourself or, or someone like Erin and say, OK, you know, what, what do I need to know? What, what should I be doing? What, what is my higher self telling me that I should actually be doing at this, yeah. at this point in time? Yeah. And I have real conversations with my guides that are like, you know, because they always say really like airy fairy things like, oh, just spread joy and love. Like they say stuff like that. Right. And I'm always like, OK, can you guys give me some really practical stuff? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Like They're not super practical. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just have those conversations, though, with your higher self, like really open up to like, OK, higher self, I need practical. Like what will. I be shown if I do this and what will I be shown if I do that you know um, just know that it's a dialogue and you can have those conversations and you can you can ask for practical because you know our angelic guides and all of our guides they're very much like soul level basis kind of um, being so they're not gonna tell you like oh go do a Facebook live on this topic probably no. not you know um, but that, that's where your rational mind gets to come into play, too. Like, we have rational minds for a reason. We have a left brain for a reason. So it's sort of marrying, like, the beauty and the guidance and the wisdom that comes for our, from our guides. And then, again, you know, being able to translate it in a way that people can relate to and people can, can like and share and whatever, you know. Um, but, again, it all just starts with just, just get out there. Like, don't, you know, don't question it too much. Don't. Don't spend too much time with your guides. Just go. <laughs> Just yeah. Sit out. Yeah. And, and that, is, that is the thing. And I, I think that's, the, um, I mean, Carla said that was very helpful. So oh, good. thanks, Carla. So, so that's good. Um, but, but yeah, it is. And I, and I do um, agree that I think sometimes people do sort of like spend too much time, you know, worrying about I need to get this in place. I need to get this in place. Oh, my guides are telling me this. Oh, the cars are telling me this. And it's like, yeah, just go out and do it. You know, even even on a you know Facebook Live, you know, just just go on Facebook Live and say, "Hi, you know, I do card readings. If you want a card reading, then please contact me." Right. A, a, few, right. a few minutes. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we make it really complicated, and you know, we all watch the webinars and we all read all the stuff, and and at the end of the day, it's just you have to start from somewhere and every entrepreneur out there will tell you the beginning wasn't pretty. The beginning wasn't perfect. The beginning had some bumps, you know, I'm, and, and no matter where you are, the, the middle has bumps. The end has bumps. They all have, there's no, there's no not bumpy path in this, but um, again, it's, it's how, how do you want to face that? You know, do you want to, say I have a bunch of fears and I'm going to stay on my couch or do you want to say, okay, I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going to put myself out there and keep putting myself out there. And yeah. 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 Well, well, Carla's um, come back. So I don't always get an answer. Sometimes I think, where are you? So I think she's talking about her guides. Yeah. Well, Ray, I'll let you answer that one. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> well, I'm, 
But to, and, and the way that, that I, I see this, you know, sometimes uh, the angel, because obviously I work with, with, with angels there, and sometimes they don't give me the answers. And it's not that I don't think, where are they? To me, it's, it's their way of saying, we don't need to actually come and give you an answer because you already know it. And if we come in and start talking to you, we're going to maybe confuse you and you're not going to be getting the answer that you think you should be getting. So we're not going to come and speak to you at this, at this moment in time because we think, OK, you need to you need to go and do that, do that thing. Or it could be that you've asked the wrong question. Yeah, and often it is it is the wrong question um, that that you've act, that you've actually asked. So so to me, it's like the two things. It's either we don't need to talk to you because you already know the answer, and we think you've got, you know, you actually know what that answer is, or it is you've asked the wrong question. I was going to say the second one because mm. I think a lot of times we ask those should questions. You know, yeah, we ask. Um, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? Should I do that? And, and, you know, I talk a lot about how our guides to them should is, it's not even a term. It's not even a no. concept because they're operating on a soul level. So we're asking like, okay, should I take that job? And what we mean is, will I lose my job? Will I be safe? Will I be happy at it? Blah, blah, blah. But from their perspective, they're like, okay, cool. You take that job and you hate it and you end up homeless on the street. Awesome. What a great experience that will be for you. Yeah. You know? And so our version of should, they're like, well, what do you mean by should? Like any way you go, you're going to be mm. okay. You know, that's the message I'll get if I ask, like you said, the wrong question that yes. the, ans the answer becomes, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. Any way you go, you're going to be fine. Like from a soul level, you will be fine. You already are fine. You're already perfect whole and complete so any of those paths are great you know from their perspective so yeah I, I I totally agree yeah 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 so so Carla I think maybe sometimes you just need to change the question that that, that you're asking and that I'll just accept that you know that you already know the answer and uh, hopefully that's the um uh, that's helped you Carla on on that one and uh, yeah I mean, your other option is just to like do a bunch of drugs and hope that you get answers or something. So. <laughs> yeah, but I, I find, I was I, just find kidding. I find, I find, I just, I find well, not personally. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. That was a bad answer. Just kidding. <laughs> it was an well, attempted humor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, we don't do drugs, just to let everyone know right there. To be, to be quite true, you don't actually need to do drugs to connect right. with the higher self. Sometimes I think that people, um, that do tend to take the drugs, uh, kind of like, might not be getting the right answers that you should be getting. Well, uh, and and you don't have any sense of um, control over it. No. Know? So it's not it's not from a place of total sovereignty and wholeness, I think. But yeah, yeah. sorry, that was a that was a bad joke. That was like, no, actually, um, to be quite truthful, that's something that sometimes people do actually ask, and that is and it is something that. That may that you know that maybe um, we should be saying is that you don't have to take drugs to actually meditate or get into a high into a high state. Totally, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, you know. Obviously, obviously, you do shamanic work, and sometimes with shamanic work, practice. We yeah. Practice, you know, um, I can never pronounce it. Avaja, I, I think, is the Peruvian. Um, that the Peruvian shamans use but but they use it in a controlled manner they don't it's not something that they take every day to get into those in into those states but Carla has come back with that was big asking my questions give me the chills woo so so yep Carla you you know that you've got to ask the right questions and that out um out there so we're sort of like coming towards the end now so now as um you all know i do guided meditation angel cards so each week i'm going to ask my guests erin would you like a mini guided meditation an angel card for you and those watching you get to choose oh, of course <laughs> okay sure 
I'd love that. Right, what do you want? Guide meditation or angel card? Angel card. Angel card, okay. So, as usual, I when I do the cards, I don't do the cards to predict the future, um, which seems strange because obviously I do past life regression, but I work with the past, I work with the future. But when I work with the past, we heal the past to help you in the present. And when we go into the future, we use the future to show you what's happening in the present. So, so I always work in the present and my cards always in the present. So what does Erin and everyone watching this live or recording? Oh, okay. Oh, you're going to love this card. That Literally, you saw that card jump out. Stepping into power, you are strong beyond measure. Oh, I love it. I got the Come chills. <laughs> I got the chills. That is so cool. And that one was literally, which which actually, you know, with what we've been talking about today, I don't actually need to do any um, interpretation of that because it's exactly what we've been talking about. And that is stepping into your into your um into your power because you ha you 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 do know what you're supposed what you're supposed to be doing, even if you don't realize it. Just go within and you actually will know what you're supposed to be doing. And that. So that's for you as well, Erin. You need to do a bit more. You've got other stuff coming up. I am. I'm getting all teary. So there must be something there. Yeah. Shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to Why am I not healed already? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to get you on sometime uh, next year once we once we know what the um, what this new new power you're going to be stepping into is all about which will awesome. be absolutely love brilliant it. love it so well, thank you guys thank everybody for watching that was so fun it, it was especially if you're going to where um you haven't watched live and you're watching this on on the on the replay and if you have are watching it on the replay then um please uh type in replay and if you have any questions or anything erin and i will sort of like be popping back onto here so we could you know we can answer any questions um, that you might have if you actually are watching this on the replay rather than live. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and that the words of wisdom Erin has given you will help you further on your journey. Now, Erin, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? What's the best way of them get in touch with you? Um, you could send me an email at Erin, E-R-I-N, at ErinNewman.com or you can... Um, find my very long name Facebook group. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Authentic and Courageous Spiritual Entrepreneurs group and Ray's in there too. I am um, and it's, it's, worth, it's worth joining it because Erin actually posts stuff and she does live feeds um, with some insightful stuff actually for you on there. So it's, it's well worth actually joining that group. Awesome. Um, yeah, or check out my website, erinnewman.com. I have a bunch of free resources on there, including shamanic journeying tips, including um, how to manifest more clients, including, gosh, I don't even know. I have like five <laughs> five amazing resources out there. So go to erinnewman.com, and there's a bunch of mindset stuff and shamanic stuff um, for free for you to download. Um, yeah, and I would love to connect with you guys, so please feel free to reach out and... Yeah, and what I'll do is um, I'll put uh, um, all Erin's contact details in the comments um, once, once the show's finished so you can actually um, click on the links to actually get that. So thank you so much for watching. Um, and like Carla, um, thank you, Carla, for sharing. I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. Um, now, if you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me as I would love to book a free 20 minute session to have a quick chat with you so that I can find out more about you and how I can help you on your journey. And by the way, I will see you on the 2nd of January at 8 p.m. where my guest, Sieta Jones, who is on an amazing journey that I think will inspire you. And I'll be having a conversation with her that I think you might want to watch, especially as it's going into the new year. So again, thank you everyone, um, especially Carla for coming and watching this on Boxing Day. Uh, and that, not all of us uh, 
you know, sort of like take time out. Some of us actually like connecting um, with other people. And again, Erin, thank you so much for being thank on the you, show. Ray. Thank you, Ray. So everyone, um, I hope you have the re wonderful rest of the holidays and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.